Much touted musical, The King of Hearts, The Road to Broadway, lasted three exhausting months, plus a disappointing 48 performances. It closed last night as the most expensive musical flop in history. Why did it bomb when other cheaper shows survive? Tonight, arts editor Dennis Cunningham in his special report tries to answer that question. Way back on Labor Day, while most folks were taking it easy, the King of Hearts cast was heading off to work. Another opening, another show in Philly, Boston, or Baltimore. Well, this was to be another opening, another show. Not in Philly or Baltimore, but in Boston. Several weeks after the bus trip north, out of town opening night. We'll make your future forget your past. A hopeful crowd of Boston theater goers, including the venerated Boston critic, Elliot Norton, assembling to see, perhaps, a hit. Certainly no one wanted a hit more than the ladies and gentlemen of the cast. As it turned out, the Boston reviews were mixed, but constructive. And after the applause, the laborious, complicated task of fixing King of Hearts for Broadway. One time in Boston, we'd be rehearsing one show in the day and doing another show at night. And sometimes they were only marginally different, and you'd, suddenly in the middle of the show, you'd think, where, where am I? Is this last night or tonight? Well, the show arrived at New York's Minskoff Theater in early October. The first preview was delayed, however, because of the many heavy sets and costumes. Ready? Five, six, seven, eight! Ten! Ten! Cats! Final and demanding rehearsals in New York two days before opening night. You must be exhausted, right? Pretty pooped. Pretty <laughs> pooped. We've been working a long time, uh, and we had five weeks in Boston with only one day off. And uh, your next day off is? A uh, day after we open. The day after you open, yeah. which will hopefully be a happy day for you. Oh, please, God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and what if it isn't? I hate to say that. Never forget I said it. No, no, that's okay, because we have to We have to think about that sometimes. I mean, like I said, I don't like to think about the response too much, but you have to be prepared for that. <laughs> After all the money, time, tears, dreams, sweat, prayers, laughs, and agony, the New York reviews. Still, as in Boston, mixed. But this time, quote, on the negative side, end quote. End quote, perhaps, but not the end of the King of Hearts. Despite the mixed reviews on the negative side, the producers decided to make a $2 million gamble and let it run on that highly chancy subject more tomorrow night. The fast fold after only 48 performances, that is Cunningham, who followed the show from its opening to its final curtain, takes a close look at the King of Hearts in part two of his special report. Six, seven, and eight, and... And all the job that you hope at last will make your future forget your past. Another pain where the ulcers go, another opening of another show. Four weeks you rehearse and rehearse, three weeks and it could be worse. One week will it ever be right, then out of the hat is that big first night. The overture is about to start. You cross your fingers and hold your heart. It's curtain time and away we go. Another opening of another show. Well, sorry to say that big first night was not a rip-roaring success. Still, King of Hearts was determined to fight the odds. You are determined to keep this show open, right? Open and it's a hit. So spoke co-producer Patty Grubman about a month after the opening. It was not a hit, but the producers were trying to make it one. Today is November 21st. King of Hearts has been running over a month now, and the producers have in their folders numerous letters from various people who have seen the show and approved of it. Letters, of course, the producers can use. And they've also put out these little buttons that says, New York loves King of Hearts, which is certainly what they're hoping. King of Hearts co-producer Joe Kipnis, owner of two 52nd Street restaurants, Joe's Pier 52 and Kona Tiki, where I spoke to him as he and Miss Grubman worked to keep the show alive. Refreshingly, Mr. Kipnis had kind words for critics in general. Through the years, I don't uh, resent critics. They're there for a reason. And uh, I would say that uh, they're all honest. Uh, I think I wish some of our politicians would be as honest as the critics. 
Still, in the case of King of Hearts, he definitely thought the critics had erred. I said what you did. <laughs> well, I suspect if I went back to see it again, well, I'd rather not think about my review. I mean, I, I I'd stand rather not think about it too. <laughs> and day to day, the actors hung on, hoping against hope that King of Hearts would somehow catch on. Of course, of course. I mean, you have a bad night on stage, you say, this is it. This is it. You're waiting all the time for that last boot to drop. But that's the nature of the beast. I mean, any Broadway show, that's the fear. King of Hearts did not catch on. Two days ago, after 48 struggling performances, it closed for good. The monetary loss, millions of dollars. The larger, more personal loss, the dashed hopes of the dedicated human beings involved. It's just a thing you've always dreamed about. I mean, to be in a big one. Well, as it turned out, it was a big one mostly for its huge loss of money, about two million dollars. But sadder yet, I feel, all those people suddenly out of work. But as the actor said, that's the nature of the beast. And bouncing back is also the nature of the beast. The producers of King of Hearts are already working on new Broadway projects, a blessing on their head. Vic?